Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, I mean, I remember my first game against the Lions. Going terrible, <laughs> and I was uh, like, I was, at halftime, I was like, dude, I know everybody's gonna be thinking I should go back to play baseball. Like, it was, it was, uh, but no, I, yeah, it, you know, I, I kind of felt like I had a good feeling about how things would go, um, and uh, yeah. It didn't really surprise me. It's Kyler Murray yesterday being asked if he knew how much a spotlight would be on him as the number one yeah. pick going into the league and reflecting on that Lions game. And man, there was a lot of soul searching going on in that uh, in that locker room at halftime of that game. How about it? Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury's Kingsbury. worried about his mortgage. <laughs> Kyler Murray's looking for his baseball mitt. I looked it up. The Cardinals and a lot of people. I remember being there that day, and a lot of people in the press box were wondering about how things were yeah. going to go too. Uh-huh. The Cardinals trailed the Lions seventeen to three at half of that game. Kyler Murray was 6 of 16 for 41 yards and a pick. Mm. His quarterback rating in that first half, his first half of NFL football was 19.8. He rallied them. They ended up tying that game. Yeah, right. And who would have ever thought? It's interesting because uh, for years you have said, we have talked about, what would it be like if Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury were separated? How would each fare without one another? The one on the bingo card I don't think we ever talked about was both benefiting. It's impossible to say that's that's not happening. And we've done uh, as we've done his whole career. We examine Kyler Murray on a week to week basis. We do. He is third right now in the NFL in total QBR. Third? <laughs> third. That's a good number. <laughs> yes. Listen, it it's starting to happen a little bit. Um, and and that's why I think this weekend is so important, because I, I really believe that. What we've seen at State Farm Stadium, I do believe that the Cardinals, if they're going to get where they want to go, one of the missing pieces that they still haven't kind of um, put in a headlock yet is is creating a vibe at home. Something something special, that connection between them and the fan base that manifests itself every Sunday or Monday or Thursday or Wednesday or Saturday or whenever the NFL is playing and and have that as part of their portfolio. That when you play us, you got to deal with a defense that's going to take your head off from Buda Baker to Kaiser White to Matt, Matt Wilson Sr. You got to deal with a quarterback who is a top five quarterback, and you're going to have to deal with this noise and these crazies. I believe the fastest way to get that back is to have a star quarterback dealing. And and so I'm I'm hoping that this is what we're entering. We're entering now a phase where the the kind of performance Kyler Murray put against the fourth ranked defense in the NFL last week and put 30 plus points on the board. Keep in mind this wasn't a 17 to 14 win. This wasn't 15 to 14. This was the offense actually functioning. And so if this if that was a precursor to more of that, then I think we're entering what is going to be the golden period for Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. Yep. Now, does ever does anything ever go as planned, especially for this football team? N no. Not necessarily. No. That caveat so, you added is very accurate, especially yeah. for this football team. Yeah. So, but but if you take care of the Bears and the Bears, as we have talked about, they, there is dysfunction all in that team right now. They're questioning their leaders, yeah, which is exactly what isn't happening in Arizona. So you've got that. Then the week after, you've got a Jets team. If the Jets lose tonight at home, and they probably will, that team might have already sold off a bunch of assets by the time you face them. Golden opportunity for this football team to get to 6-4 and four going into their bye week. Which, again, didn't seem... It, it didn't, didn't seem possible. Seem possible. Uh, about the questioning going on in Chicago right now, here's Courtney Cronin from Around the Horn on ESPN earlier this week about uh, what's happening with the Chicago Bears publicly. What I have heard from players over the last 24 hours is something that I typically haven't in the Chicago in on my time covering the Chicago Bears, and that is openly questioning coaching decisions. When you go back to the Doug Kramer fumble at the one-yard mm -hmm. line, yeah. that you're handing the football to a backup center, first carry he's had in the NFL, <laughs> and that play results what it does. DJ Moore said in a radio interview today that he was surprised that that play was called when it was. And then, of course, the play before the Hail Mary, when the Bears don't pressure, when they don't try to stop Terry McLaurin from getting to the sideline. Kevin Byard, veteran safety who's been in this league a very long time, said that he had a conversation with Matt Eberflus about that play. Maybe corners could have pressed up. Maybe they could have sent pressure. But that Eberflus called what he called and that ultimately it was 
was what it was. Yeah, I, this is a battle of two teams that, at least from a from a feeling themselves standpoint, could mm-hmm. be more opposite right now. No, the Bears are certainly down in the dumps, mm-hmm. and the Cardinals are, you know, for the first time in three years, which is still an amazing stat to me. They've won back to back games, and they've done it in dramatic fashion. Uh-huh. That also puts wind in your sails. Mm-hmm. When you're able to come back, and Kyler Murray talked about that yesterday. Hey, we we want to put these games away early, but yeah, I think it goes back to the culture, the makeup of the team. Um, you know, no fight or no no quit in us. Uh, Sixty minutes, um, continue to believe in each other and understand. You know, we're going to get that stop. We're going to score. You know, we're going to score when we need to. Um, obviously, yes, we would like to come out and you know dominate from the jump, um, which is something we got to be better about. But uh, you know, it's also good to know that we you know we're. we're there's, there's this team that's resilient as hell, so it's good. Yeah, we talk about in the NBA how mm-hmm. it's a, really hard to dominate for 48 minutes of basketball. Yes. It's a little bit more common in, in the NFL, but I wouldn't say it's common for a team to come out and just dominate for 60 minutes. That's why we were all marveling at what the Cardinals did against the Rams in week two, because it was so rare just to dominate from the from the get gate. The get gate. And, and, and put it away for early and coast to a victory. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that they are resilient, the fact that they do have that ability and belief in a in a kicker who's not their normal kicker to make those kicks at the end of games. Yeah, that's uh, they should be well. And and a I bit. and I think that it's you can't disregard the fact that Kyler Murray now has come up big in clutch in in either make or win or win or go home kind of games, and and that's good. That's a really really good sign because yep. that's something the greatest quarterbacks do regularly. And if he makes that a regular thing, like you remember, you remember at the end of Peyton Manning, at the end of Joe Montana, uh, Tom Brady, if they had the ball at the end of the game, you knew you were done. You knew you were cooked. That's a good feeling to have. And yes. and, and and that sort of stuff happens to quarterbacks when they start stacking um, successful comebacks, successful game winning drives. And and Kyler's got a couple of them now this and, season. And this will check a box, too, on on Sunday. Kyler's going to go against another number one overall draft pick in Caleb Williams. So the list now would be Caleb Williams. Mm-hmm. Kyler has Kyler gone against Trevor Lawrence yet? I think I think they did. I think they did. Yeah, didn't they? They, they played Jacksonville. Kyler was hurt when they played Burrow and the Bengals last year. He's gone against Baker Mayfield. He's gone against Jared Goff. He's gone against Jameis Winston. I think he's gone against. Cam Newton when Cam Newton came back. Yes. Yep. With the Patriots, I think. Uh, a Patriots, and he came back. Remember when he came back for the Panthers and they he signed and then they played him on Sunday. That's right. Cam yeah, Newton yeah. had this ridiculous game against the Cardinals. That's right. Yeah. So Matthew Stafford. Uh, oh, going even further back, Matthew Stafford. I didn't go back far enough. Yeah, I think that's where the list ends. But there's another one. The microscope's going to be on both of those guys uh, on Sunday at State mm-hmm. Farm Stadium. Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.